Now let's also say that he has not had that dream of looking after orphans. And yet he looks after orphans. Again, is that a bad thing for someone to look after orphans without having dreamt of it? Is that a bad thing? It's an area that the word of God has already covered. You know what the Bible says when it comes to looking after those people that are desperate for help. So whether you have a dream to confirm what the Bible has already said or you have the Bible, and you have no dream, you are still supposed to take that as a responsibility. Could at some point in my life, I should be found raising other people, helping those that are desperate for help, and you should not be afraid of such a revelation. You should not be afraid of such a dream. Even if you are not going to have it in form of a dream, in form of a vision, you still have it in form of the Bible. The Word of God has already given you a, a, a way of going about it. You are under instruction, according to the Word of God, to look after the needy. So there is no danger in you doing so. The danger comes in when it, when it gets to the how part, the how part, that's where the danger is. So, Nangoda Tangeta address the area interpretation because your concern is, is this the meaning of the dream that you had? If that wasn't the meaning, I would have told you, but I know you were wakura so. I told you how you grew up. But that's not, that's not the case. If there was a history of yours that you had not been told and someone had lied to you, then that would become the meaning of that dream. Then that would be the interpretation of the dream. That you were taken from such and such an office. And this is not your But that's not the case. <laughs> Yeah. So you have to look into that and consider that. But the issue is when and how. That should be the major question. Are you supposed to be doing it right away? You have to look at your capacity at the moment. Are you able to help other people? And is the help that you can give as of today, that's significant. Where are you placed currently financially? Are you able to look after? Are you able to bring that vision to pass? Can you begin to work on the dream that God has given you in trying to fulfill it? Because looking after orphans, doesn't mean that you have to have 10 of them, 15 of them, 20 of them, 30. Two, you can look after them and you have fulfilled the scripture. One, you can look after an orphan, one orphan, and you would have fulfilled a passage of scripture, you would have fulfilled a dream. But then the dream gets to a point where it has to grow. In as much as at this moment you are not yet able to build a facility where you can accommodate those, those children. But with just the watch that you have, there is an orphan that you can assist at this point. So when you say you don't have the capacity, probably uh, you don't have the money as of now. It depends on the magnitude of the vision that you want to accomplish. But at any stage, you still have enough to help another person at any point in your life. At any point. You can have money that is not sufficient, 
you want to buy a car, but you know the money is so little, I can't buy a car. But it can buy a bicycle. Right? Yes. So the money you have currently might not be enough for the size of the vision that God has given you as of now. Because we must give some of these visions a chance to grow. But the only way the vision can grow is when you would have started it. There must be the beginning, the inception of the vision. Where it starts from, it has to start from almost nothing. Then you grow from there. When you look after one orphan, you learn. You look after two. You put them in one place. You are keeping them at your house. You see how they fight. Already, you are becoming a master in that area. You know by the time you get to 100 orphans, you know how to keep them in one place. So you need also to grow because that orphanage is going to also help you grow. You'll be a part of those people that you're taking care of. So you have to start slowly. I wouldn't even recommend that you start big. Even if you are to get enough money to build a facility, I would still insist start with one, start with two, start with three. So that when they mess you up, we look at you again and we ask you the question, do you still want to add to the number? And you say, okay, let me have another one. And you catch them gossiping about you. Then we ask you again, do we add to the number? And you say, let me have. So, because you need to. <laughs> you will have some of those people coming after you, fighting you. You will have some of them that you never did, you never did any. They will report you. you. You will be attending court sessions. Someone can just come in in one day, having taken care of a girl for I don't know how many years. Someone can come and offer her money, and then she makes a report that you, you raped her. And you find yourself in the court. Would you still go back and aid more orphans? and continue because there is need for you to grow in that ministry as well especially when you start helping people that are not appreciative of your work hmm? yeah. you will have a lot of them you can have up to 100 and they go they become big they get employed, some they start their own businesses, and yet on your birthday, not even a message gets into your phone. Would you still want to continue? So it's not necessarily about them, it's about your capacity to handle that vision. You need to start small. Start small and get tried and get tested, and you keep going back. Are you still? God will still keep asking you the question, are you still interest, interested in the vision? And you say yes. You go back, you get hurt, and then he comes back and he asks you, are you, do you still want to continue with this? Yes. That's how you grow. So even if you had money, which you think now is the problem, that I don't have the capacity, even if you are to get the money, I would recommend you still start small. So that as you look after those people, you are also growing together with that enterprise. Because there is a lot. There is a lot of bleeding in that area. A lot of bleeding. If you can easily be hurt emotionally, don't go there. Don't go there. Just spend your money. Find something else that you can do. Go for a holiday. Yes, you must have a certain character and that character has to be given to you as a gift from God <clears throat> you you will be hurt you will be hurt so do you have that character 
is capital, not just cash. Okay. Have you taken care of your emotions? Because that's probably the first orphan that you need to take care of. So, so you parent that one first. Let your emotions have a father figure first who is in charge. If you can't control your emotions, uh, it's a dangerous area. Then when we get to the spiritual side again, you'll be fought so hard for taking care of those people by the devil himself. He will not even send demons. He will come himself. He doesn't like that. Ah, he doesn't like that. You know, most of these people that we help, you must understand that your battle and even some of the problems that you begin to experience in life will start from the day that you start helping certain people. Why? The devil himself, you must understand, he wants some of those people to suffer. He wants some of, most of those people that you help, the devil is interested in seeing them suffer. And the moment you come in, now you have stood in between the wall. You are defending these victims. They are victims in the hands of the devil. And the devil will come after you, he will come after your money. So, this is the reason why some, instead of doing it themselves, you can find an orphanage and you always send a certain amount of money weekly, monthly. <clears throat> At least you are cushioned, you are a bit protected by the senior person, whoever is in charge of that orphanage. He has gone through the process of being verified because not all of us are called to do that not to say we are we are not supposed to be i'm just saying not all of us can survive what then comes after not all of us so in as much as that is your desire try and start small And there are stages. <clears throat> at the moment, you must look at your personal responsibility. I'm trying to adjust this to bring it to your personal ministry. I must try and get a nicer way of saying what, what I'm about to say. <laughs> I have to be careful. <laughs> yeah. <sighs> Let God bless you first with, with your own kid, with your own child. Hmm? And let that child have a father. Mm. Let's, let's have children first. And let us first not allow those children to live as orphans. First, before we look outside. From there, then you would, you would know if you really have such a calling. Because it would not 
What? He, he confirms that he is a new father. Yeah. He's got a, ch- a small child. Yes. That's what I'm saying. Let's let that one. Let that. That one that has come should be the one to invite others to say, "Come and enjoy. Come and see the kind of a father." That child should not live like an orphan. When he or she is under the care of a visionary, of a man who was given a dream, of a bigger orphanage, you start with the... Do you know that even if you are to adopt a a child, they need to look at your children that you have. Where are you staying? If you are being taken care of, they will not give you a child to adopt. If you are being taken care of, there's a procedure that looks into that. You don't get, you are, they are not, the court is never going to give you the right to have another baby come into your house. If the one that is in your house already is going to bed hungry, all I'm saying is to prove that you have a vision, you have a dream, start with the immediate children that God has given you and tell me if they are ever going to live a life of an orphan. If they do, then forget about looking after other orphans. Because you already have one. I'm saying this to say, start small. The first one that you are going to have, it doesn't have to be an outsider. No, it has to be your own child. It can even be your own child who is the first orphan. Are you there for him? Why is your child not telling you certain stories if you are there? I'm not, I'm not asking you this question so that you answer me. But think about it. If, if your child sees you as a parent that is present, not a dead one. Because being an orphan can be an experience. It has nothing to do with your presence or absence. If there are things that they cannot share with you now while you are present, what are they telling you? They are living a life of an orphan. So if I say start with one, I'm not saying go and adopt one. I'm saying you simply make your wife pregnant and then you have one. And let's see how that one is going to enjoy the vision. And you grow from there. I have the capacity to have uh, 50 more children. And to look after them. To get them from any place. And they come and they stay in my house. Right. But they should not then become a problem to me. They should not weary me down. I should begin to enjoy life from the day that I start taking care of them. They must not realize that I have become depressed because of them. 
my life should become better because of them. I should, at some point, thank them for coming and joining my family. Because I would have done so at a time when I now had the capacity. The capacity. How long does it take for you to supply the needs of your children? How long? Your children are currently in need of a lot of things. Probably your daughter, your son needs a better school. Better food. Be a better environment. Even a better home address. That is yet to be given to, to him or to her. So I'm not discouraging you people from looking after the orphans. I'm just saying, start small. Start small, then you see yourself. Do you still have the capacity? Do you still want to continue? Then you can keep on adding more to that number. Until you get to a point where you say, if I'm going to have five children of my own, I still need five more. from other places that I just, want, I just want to look after them. That would be good for you, but that should not reflect on your health. We should not then find you crying because of these orphans that you are looking after. If you do so, if I catch you crying, <laughs> you are one of the orphans, and yes, you were supposed to be taken care of by somebody else. So don't overload yourself. These are financial demands. They will weigh you down. And you will regret. It will be at a point where you, you don't know what to do with the children anymore. They are there looking at you. Why? You didn't have a stable source of income. And then you went on, you established something that is so solid, that is perpetual, that is forever. Those kids will be there forever. While they are there, they will impregnate each other. And they, they will give you more, more orphans. <laughs> so, <laughs> so the ministry will keep growing. So you need to have not just money for that, a heart for that, a personality, a character for that. And once they are gone, once they've matured, they go, they will marry, they will have their businesses, driving nice cars, don't be offended. They don't owe you anything. Once they are gone, learn to detach yourself from them, allow them to have their own independent life. As long as that can offend you again, you are not the right father for them. That was not your calling. Thank you, my brother. Okay, let's have...